In keeping with the theme of doing whatever is near me at the time for a video, today, something more recent. And just to throw out a spoiler, you know, it's not perfect, but maybe this one can do enough to be the best 200 watt USB power adapter. If you want to just know if it works, yeah, it works fine. It's a 200 watt USB power adapter from Belkin, and it's quite capable, but there are a lot of details to dig into to get the full picture. In this video, the power performance will be measured, the AC to DC efficiency, a brief talk on the way this converts power, the negotiation of the USB ports and how things work in general, the modes of operation and how the power is shared on this device will be covered. This all USB-C device feels more modern, but as with other 200 watt devices, it's a bigger device. Will it be able to hold up to the thermals and will it be safe to use around the world? There's a lot to do, so stick around to find out everything this USB power adapter has to offer and why it might be the one for me. There is an affiliate link which earns me a couple percent but costs you nothing if shopping at the same location anyway, as well as links for more information. Many thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. The detailed data is on Patreon. Should be able to focus more as this is a single device today. The Belkin 4 port 200 watt Boost Charge Pro. It's professional. This is a big adapter. The power cord notably has a three pin connection, so you can swap it for any cord you need for any other countries. I will check the performance on multiple voltages and test if this has earth continuity later on. The adapter itself is shipped in a no plastic packaging, but there's a pretty big fail in that the stickers adhere to the case. I gave up trying to peel these off. The shiny plastic front and back attract dust like a magnet, but at least they're white. The USB ports on this device are interesting in that they have two circle designations. Essentially, the power is split into two groups of ports. One side is a 140 watt group and the other side is a 60 watt group. If multiple ports are used, these divide by two. So 70, 70, 30, 30. I think that's pretty good. In general, this would work for my most often used case of a laptop, a phone, a watch, and a camera charger. The bottom side of this device has a few mentions of how this consumes power and some markings describing the ports. There are also a few logos on the bottom of the device. Some I think are obvious, but the six in a circle indicates compliance with the Department of Energy Efficiency Ratings, level six. I'll check on that, of course. They also claim a safety listing through Intertech. I can't check all of that, but I'll have some very low level basic checks. This basically means that the device is less risky to use with mains power. In terms of the basics for modes of operation, it lacks a 12 volt fixed mode, but generally as everything else does. The programmable power supply mode or PPS is up to 21 volts and 4.75 amps. It doesn't go all the way to five amps. This mode offers variable voltage to the output, which your device chooses. This device also offers an AVS, which is the higher voltage variable mode to go from 15 to 28 volts. So it is doing something more modern. This adapter does have one odd behavior I am not a fan of. The 60 watt section is strictly no power factor correction. This is a technique to correct the way the AC power is consumed to match the shape of the sinusoidal voltage waveform. If these don't match, there are several potential issues, noise being one and high current consumption being another. A capacitive dropper circuit, for example, could have a problem with this. The capacitor is a high pass filter, so guess what's high and passes right through? Transients and noise made by this circuit. Just something to consider. The higher power section, the 140 watt side, will trip power factor correction with either 15 volts or 20 volt mode active, or if the 9 volt mode is on and consuming power while the other side is consuming power. So above 60 watts essentially to turn this on. It ends up using more power with PFC off versus on at this power level. So maybe they just set the target to turn on too high. It's not an issue if you always use this with a laptop on the high power side, which if you're buying a 200 watt adapter, hopefully that's the use case. The average performance of this adapter on 120 volts is good for this class of adapter. I did trip the PFC for the 100 watt plus mode, so this helped a little. The efficiency is actually good though. The voltage, although a little on the low side at 28 volts, is fine. The stability was notably very good from this adapter. The ripple was stable and low for every test. It's nice to see this stable of an output from a USB adapter. So in terms of a device for your devices, it's good. When switching over to 230 volts AC on the input, the results basically didn't change. The power factor correction circuit did struggle a little with this higher voltage, but it did hold the efficiency up. 
the output voltage was unaffected by input voltage. Again, another good thing. Thermally, this adapter was able to stay on without any problems. It's certainly getting hot on the inside, and the case was still getting hotter after the 60 minute period of operation, but it's far from the worst adapter I've seen in this regard. The thermals are of course tied to the power level and the efficiency of the adapter. In this case, the adapter is pretty strong on the efficiency scale, so it's not too much of a surprise that it stayed on. And with roughly 20 watts to deal with that full load, it's not going to be cold by any means, but reasonable. The heat inside could mean shorter life for capacitors. See videos linked in the description for deep dives on this. In terms of isolation, this is the thing that separates the dangerous side, the mains, from you on the low voltage side. There are two different parameters I'm going to look at. The first is the usual AC leakage tests and DC leakage tests. These values were within the average range for adapters like this, and the tingling feeling you get sometimes from the metal body of a laptop or a phone screen should be acceptable on both 240 or 120 volts, so that's good. Another isolation check is how the ground pin is connected. In this case, it's a direct connection. The ground pin of the AC socket is directly connected to the ground of the USB sockets. No isolation, zero ohms. So any device you connect will be earthed with an earthed AC socket. This is good if you want to use this power supply for something like a soldering iron. It's providing the ESD safe protection. That's all that means. The soldering iron tip is earthed. This could cause things like ground loops in production environments though, so a DI box has a purpose. In terms of home use, this will shunt AC leakage to ground. Okay, time to compare this with some other USB adapters. I picked a bunch of random ones, and each test has different comparisons depending on what I could find quickly. So, first up is weight. This adapter is not a lightweight. It has some heft, and it requires the cable, so count it. It's certainly the desktop class you keep at home. I threw in the 140 watt one port adapter for comparison as a portable adapter option. The 200 watt anchor is a little lighter, but it's not known for being particularly small. These adapters are all physically pretty large as well. Considering the power level, they still really aren't terrible for size, but yeah, if you look at it next to a 100 watt wall USB adapter, they're chonky. In terms of value, I updated the prices of some of these. The Anchor and the Ugreen are both cheaper than launched by a pretty significant amount. But still, after this, they still don't get the value go ahead. The Apple takes the lowest spot in terms of value. This new Belkin 200 watt adapter is actually in a pretty strong position. It's 200 watts, can actually do 200 watts, and it's like two adapters in one, really. So for this cost, it kinda makes sense. Time to dig into some more data. When looking at the idle graph for these, they are all pretty good. The worst one is the Belkin on the chart, but that's at 230 volt mains in. At 120 volt, it's in the same range as the Apple and the Anchor 240 watt adapter, so it's not bad. If you consider the Belkin like two adapters, it's even better though. All of these adapters have no problem meeting energy efficiency standards like the EU2019 or DOE6. The Anchor 200 watt did something special being lower than most with any input voltage. If you never use the Anchor, it's good, because the average performance is where things get shaken up. The average power consumption graph is more spread out, and this matters a lot as power adapters climb the power scale. Even though these are physically a little larger, they still have to get the heat out of the solid cases, and that's not so easy. Belkin does very good here, achieving near Apple 140 watt levels of efficiency while operating on 120 volt AC. This is actually the best one in the actual 200 watt specific category. If these adapters don't have at least these efficiency levels, they overheat. So Belkin is doing well here. You can always look up and compare these on your own on the pqs.app site where all these adapters are listed. So it's one more USB power adapter. It's not made in China, so maybe not subject to some future tariffs, or maybe it is, who knows. The USB power adapter as a whole is a good device. It has some favorable power sharing options that I actually like and they make sense. The power negotiation is a little old in that each side will reset the power on any plugs and unplugs. You can limit this behavior by using each side independently. You do have to pay attention to which port you plug into. 
The white LED is not too bright, that indicates it's on, and you can always cover it if it is too bright. The adapter lacks the 12 volt mode and the PPS is not quite all the way to 5 amps, which are odd decisions but similar to what a lot of other adapters are doing. In terms of the efficiency, this adapter for the 200 watt category is the winner. The idle power consumption was also good. So I think I have to call this the best of for the category of 200 watts. It's capable. The only real issue I can find with this device is that it has preference for the way it converts power to one port side. The 60 watt port side doesn't have any power factor correction, which if you just choose to use the other ports first, it won't matter. If you really need the watts, you are probably plugging in a laptop. I could see this as a good option for a mini PC and a monitor combo with the two separated sides. I think that's what I'm going to use this for. Let me know what your case would be for this power adapter. Thanks for watching. There's links in the description. Goodbye.